Greetings everyone. We are going to start talking about Indian literature, but we are going to do it in the medium of English because this video and these videos are primarily targeted towards the students of the newly formulated syllabus of the English major courses across Indian universities and they require the Indian classical literatures to be taught in the beginning of the 8th semester course. Now, our texts which are in our syllabus include portions from the great epics, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata and also works by the great ancient Sanskrit dramatists like Kalidas and also other works by other lesser known or less mainstream you can say writers. But in order to start all this, before we begin to talk about all these various texts, we have to resolve a very fundamental issue. That is the issue of language. We all know that English as a language is very different from Indian languages. Be it Sanskrit or be it any of the modern Indian languages we speak nowadays. So, it has been a problem of the scholars of Indian literatures in the modern era when English has become an almost international language, how to represent the sounds and symbols of the Devanagari script through the Roman script, the most widely known system IAST, which stands for the International Alphabet for Sanskrit Transliteration. And this system was officially recognized internationally in 1894. And this system has an elaborate guide to render every Devanagari letter with the help of Roman symbols. As we know, there are several letters in the vowel portion of the Devanagari script as well as the consonant portion. For every Devanagari vowel, there is a specific IAST guided symbol. These are the vowels of the Devanagari alphabet as we know. A, A, E, E, U, U, R, A, A, O and O. Now, according to the IAST, A, the sound A makes is to be represented by an A, a simple A. This should be read as A. Likewise, when there is an A sound, it will be represented by an A with a bar at the top, A bar. This means A, this means A. This is A, this is A. Choti E or small E is represented by a small I. And the long E is represented by an I bar. So, this is E, but this is E, E, E. Likewise, the small O is represented by a small U and the long O is represented by, as you would expect, U bar. This is O, this is O, this is O, this is O. Re is represented by R with a dot at its bottom. This is Re. Remember, this is not as overwhelmingly E sounded as we would pronounce the compound Ri. Ri would be Re. But this is a letter in itself. It just has to have a certain R ish sound. It is Re. Re. This is supposed to be a vowel in the Devanagari alphabet. A is represented by a small e. A is represented by a i. A i. A i. O is as expected represented by a small o. And o is represented by a u. O o. So, this is the system of transliterating Sanskrit vowels into Roman letters according to the IAST. A, A, E, 
e o u re a i o and o now to come to consonants there are several more consonants in the devanagari alphabet and strictly speaking we would not need all of them to do our regular work of transliteration because after all our duty our main task is not to look into the, the intricacies of sanskrit grammar but rather to understand the transliterated words and to be able to pronounce them now although there are several letters in the sanskrit alphabet in the devanagari alphabet the languages by and large don't use all of them they use most of them and they are what we are going to learn now the consonants are ka for k kh for kh ग फॉर जी घ फॉर जी एच फॉर एन विथ अ डॉट एट द टॉप च इज फॉर सी छ फॉर सी एच ज फॉर जे झ फॉर जे एच फॉर एन विथ अ टिल्ड एट द टॉप ट फॉर टी डॉट ठ फॉर टी डॉट फॉलोड बाय एच ड फॉर डी डॉट ढ फॉर डी डॉट एच ण फॉर एन विथ अ डॉट एट इट्स बॉटम त फॉर टी थ फॉर टी एच द फॉर डी ध फॉर डी एच न फॉर एन अ सिंपल एन प फॉर पी फ फॉर पी एच ब फॉर बी भ फॉर भी एच म फॉर एम Y for Y, R for R, L for L, W for V, Sh. This Sh comes from the back of the mouth. Sh, with an S, is supported by a diagonal dash at the top. Sh. This Sh comes from the palate of the mouth. What I mean is that when you pronounce this. your tongue should be obstructed at the palate of the mouth not at the back of your mouth so this is sh represented by s with a dot at its bottom a good example of this is to be found in the word krishna the famous god king of indian mythology his name contains this sh s with a dot at its bottom that is followed by s the simple dental s s and ended by h the simple h these are the consonants now we have to take a few examples of uh, how to use this the god king we can begin with krishna k with a re k with a re sh with n so first we have to see the sound for k is k so we write k the vowel attached to it is re or r with a dot at its bottom so this followed by the sh so this sh is the second sh with an s with a dot at its bottom so we write s with a dot at its bottom followed by n n as in this n the third row n with a dot at its bottom so n with a dot at its bottom and since it does not have any vowel marker attached to it we have to assume that it has the first vowel a uh, attached to it so it is followed by a simple a for a uh. krishna krishna now notice here that the widely popular spelling for krishna is not written like this it is i'm sure all of you know it is written simply like this krishna 
But herein is the importance of systems like IAST that if you write Krishna, it does not have any specific Devanagari marker here and people who speak in various dialects of English, you know English has hundreds of dialects all over the world, even within India, different people speak English differently. So if anybody randomly sees this word, they can pronounce it as Krishna, 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 there can be many variations. But to denote the exact pronunciation that the original authors meant it to be pronounced in, we need a system like the IAST so that we can copy this sound precisely, Krishna, Krishna. That is the first example. Now we can take something more simple. Suppose the word sa, ra, la, which means simple. It is a plain sa, a dental sa. See, this sa, just an s. So, s, a, followed by a plain r with no vowel markers. So, the default marker, r, r is r. So, r, a, followed by l. Again, the simple l followed by the default vowel marker, sarala. This is to be pronounced as Sarala. Sarala means simple. Now, if you are Indian and belonging to many of its languages, you would know that this word can also be rendered feminine to be used as a name for women. There are many women named this. This is pronounced Sarala. Sara, these are same as this one, S A R A S A R A. But here the la is not without any vowel marker, it has a vowel marker, it has the marker of a. Therefore, we have to put an a bar after l to render it perfectly in IAST. This is how you will see, you will understand that you should pronounce it as Sarala. This is Sarala. This is a masculine name if you want to use it as a name and this is Sarala. If you think in terms of meaning, Sarala also means simple but it is the name of women. It is a feminine word. Sarala, Sarala and this is a more convincing demonstration of why IAST is important. Suppose somebody randomly sees this word, he or she would not know whether to pronounce it as Sarala, 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 whatever. But if you know that this has been written according to IAST and you know about IAST, then you would point it out that the only valid pronunciation of this word is Sarala. And the only valid pronunciation of this word is Sarala. Now just to play with it, we can take meaningless words with the same consonant composition but without meaning just to demonstrate the difference this all makes just to make it a little clearer sarala this would be sarala suppose again sarala this would be sarala but of course, these two words are meaningless. They are only to demonstrate how the vowel markers change the sound of a word. Hence, this is our lesson on the IAST. I wish to include useful links regarding the IAST in the description of the video. Do check them out. Thank you.